Hello and welcome to the Hooniverse. In this video I am going to be going through the history of the Ice Warriors. Like the Sontarans, another race who pride themselves with honour and their skills in combat, the Ice Warriors became one of the most intelligent civilizations, with at one point owning an empire throughout the solar system. So who are the Ice Warriors, and how did they begin? Well, according to the audio adventure Lords of the Red Planet, the original Sauron evolutionaries later known as Ice Warriors were created by the Gandorans as a slave warrior race via forced evolution of the non-sentient turtle-like Saurans. While the original batch of ice warriors used by Gandoran dictator Zadur to slaughter her own people was killed, the Doctor, knowing that they would once rule the rogue planet, speculated that Quendril either had more of them created at a later point, or that they evolved naturally from the Saurans. Now we don't get an exact date of these events, but it's definitely in the BCs. Now as these Saurans potentially became ice warriors, they then went on to build a civilization growing in intelligence and technological advancements. Accounts differed to the downfall of the Ice Warriors, with some mentioning being at their peak and active thousands of years BC, and others claiming their atmosphere to have been destroyed centuries before the 21st century. At some point, a group of Ice Warriors led by Lord Araxor were convicted for warmongering. Their sentence was to life imprisonment in a prison in Antarctica. An Ice Warrior attacked the prison in an attempt to escape, However, this flooded the prison, trapping everyone beneath the ice in suspended animation. Looking at the body of the 7th Doctor, who was also trapped beneath the ice, it was estimated this time was millions of years before 2012. At some point in the past, the species that became known as the Ice Warriors built a gigantic generation ship that later became known as Phobos, and colonised Mars. Some exploration of other planets was attempted, Varga went to Earth, but his ship was trapped in a glacier for thousands of years. Sometime after this, the Ice Warriors' civilization went into de decline as Mars became more inhospitable. As Mars became colder, the Ice Warriors adapted to use what the 11th Doctor called survival armor, to survive in the freezing cold temperatures. In around 3000 BC, the Ice Warriors had a mighty empire and a fleet. The fleet was led by the Nyx Fasis and commanded by Grand Marshal Skaldak. In unknown circumstances, Skaldak was trapped under the ice of the North Pole on Earth and was frozen for thousands of years. Now at some point the Martian civilization was made of peaceful people who were not warriors but pacifists who hunted for food and never experienced war. In this era, their world was a thriving planet with the native sentient species thriving for 12,000 years. Though they preferred the cold, one settlement was built in the equator, but the construction of its shell-shaped building allowed for a cooler environment, and waterways kept the populace fulfilled. Their sense of honour stretched back from this time as their civilization was based on a gift economy, in which things were given freely and receivers gave something back in return. It was a world of craftsmen, builders and farmers, which built wondrous pyramids on their home planet. During this early period, Martian cities were noted as being much like those on Earth. Food waste and plant matter was left on the streets. However, a visit by the Fifth Doctor and his companion Amy led to the fall of the race. The two time travellers were looking for a decaying segment of the key to time, one of which took the form of the pyramid's capstone. The segment had begun its decay, causing earthquakes. The Doctor and Amy, along with Zara and Harmonious Fourteen Zinc, who were also looking for the segments, reached the top of the pyramid. Zara, who was a sentient tracer, activated the segment, leaving with Zinc's time ring. This led to the formation of a gravity well, which sent earthquakes and hurricanes across the planet for three decades. These devastated the Martian civilization. Some managed to get off world, but most remained on Mars, where they fought amongst themselves for food and shelter. After 30 years, the energies from the segment of the key to time had been spent, and the ground had settled. What remained of the race emerged onto their world, where they planned to rebuild, even it did take them a thousand years. Despite the honourable goal, the Ice Lord Isdal had been observing the sky. His studies determined that their atmosphere was no longer capable of keeping out radiation from outer space. This would eventually kill them all. He told the government that their turmoil was not over, as with the evidence of sickening children, he declared that their world was no longer sustainable. He was ignored by his people. Isdal made the ultimate sacrifice to prove himself right. He elected to step outside and face the Red Dawn, knowing he would die. 
His death led to his people coming to the same conclusion and they worked to survive, slowly becoming a conqueror race that took what they wanted from others. A group of ice warriors remained in suspended animation on Mars to protect Isdal's tomb. Risking never being woken up, Isdal's guardians lay inside their tombs waiting for a life form with enough honourable intentions to make it past the biometric locks inside the tomb, having much to offer to the ice warriors as they would to any earth life forms that would discover the tomb. According to the Twelfth Doctor, Mars' atmosphere had all but evaporated and the surface was lifeless before 1881. He told Araxa that the ice warriors could not survive without help. Friday agreed with the Doctor. At some point prior to his travels to ancient Mars, the Fifth Doctor was surprised that there were ice warriors still around by the 21st century. He assumed they all left Mars after its atmosphere thinned centuries before the 21st century, while Lord Zazal said the ice warriors had discovered primitive early life developing on Earth before his people went into suspended animation. The Eighth Doctor dated this time as many millions of years before the 23rd century. The Eleventh Doctor claimed that the ice warriors were scattered all across the universe. Following the destruction of Mars' atmosphere, the ice warriors fled to Deimos, one of the planet's moons, where they constructed catacombs and placed themselves in suspended animation in the hope of one day either reclaiming Mars or conquering Earth. A human-made exhibit on Deimos dramatising the lead-up to Isdal's walk into the dawn mentioned that Earth was unsuitable to be conquered and inhabited at this point in history, and that the ice warriors had nowhere to evacuate to. It said the ice warriors would one day awaken from the tombs to become rightful rulers of the soul system. Lord Zazal, whom had placed himself in suspended animation around the same time as those on Deimos, also told the Fifth Doctor that the point of the Earth's environment was unsuitable for them. According to Lord Zazal, even without the threat of the dawn, the low temperature and loss of water would mean that an ice warrior could only survive for a few days. As Mars died, one million Martians remained trapped in suspended animation on board the Generation Ship that had become the moon Phobos. Similar installations existed in the asteroid belt in the Sol system. At some point after Isdal met the Red Dawn, the tracer Zara asked Isgar, now an elderly ice lord, to come to a safe place so she could assemble the rest of the key to time, and perhaps restore Mars. Iskar and a group of his warriors left in a ship, putting themselves in suspended animation on a spaceship commanded by Iskar. Centuries before 1997, Martian scientists concluded that the possibility of oxygen-breathing life forms was a complete absurdity. There were many attempts by the Martians to revitalise their world, but they lacked the resources to accomplish it. They tried to grow plants in a barren soil of their planet, but these were always rotten and dying. In the end, Mars was abandoned by the majority of the ice warriors, who set out into space to find new worlds. Meanwhile, in 1983, a lone ice warrior by the name of Grand Marshal Skaldak, who had been frozen in ice for over 5,000 years, was brought aboard the Soviet submarine, the Firebird. It was decided to fall the ice before they reached Moscow, and Skaldak was revived. After revealing himself, Skaldak was attacked by the crew and imprisoned. He used his armour to send a distress beacon. Managing to escape by leaving his suit, Skaldak noticed that his distress call hadn't been answered. Believing his race to be dead, Skaldak attempted to use the sub's nuclear arsenal to attack the humans on Earth, allowing the two superpowers to strike back in mutually assured destruction. The Eleventh Doctor and Clara Oswald attempted to talk him into showing mercy. Before he made a decision, Skaldak was rescued by his people. After being brought onto their ship, Skaldak remotely deactivated the launch procedure. Also after the fall of the Ice Warriors, in the 2010s an Ice Warrior was a resident at the Hidden Trap Street in London. As with the rest of the inhabitants, it appeared cloaked in human form through the use of lurkworms. Far into the future, the late 40th century to be precise, the Ice Warriors, still in the Galactic Federation, had for the most part renounced their warlike ways. The last dated appearance of the Ice Warriors is from the 51st century, where during an ice age on Earth, Varga and his crew were finally revived from the ice and decided to take over the first Britannica's base, and then the world. This plan was foiled by the Time Lord known as the Doctor. A final bit of presumed history is from the episode The Waters of Mars, where the Tenth Doctor believed that the Ice Warriors trapped the water virus known as the Flood in the glacier which Bowie Base 1 had been taking drinking water from. 
This is the Doctor's assumption, and we don't have any dates to it, so I can't be sure where in Ice Warrior history to place it. To be honest, the history of the Ice Warriors is a bit of a mess, really, as dates are sparse and timelines are, well, timey-wimey, so the history isn't so easy to decipher. This is the most information I could acquire regarding the history of the Ice Warriors. I hope you enjoyed the video about the warrior race from Mars who never seemed to get a break. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, comment below, and if you want to see what I'm making in the future, please click the subscribe button. If you want to see more videos, click the links on the left. And with that, it's the end of the video, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.